the salary increases that were announced, those did not come out of a consultative process with the People's National Party. We were hearing those numbers for the first time. So the party could not have canvassed a view before and exactly how we would have approached it. So it is true that that, react, that, that response may have been incomplete and more needed to have been said. But we were not in a position to have formulated a position on it because we were hearing it for the first time. Sure. We and the public, we're at the, we're at the same place. We're saying it is not that we're opposed to an increase for parliamentarians, but we're saying that there is a huge difference between the increases. You're talking about 20% for the majority of persons in the public sector and then 300% for the political directorate. It, uh, it comes across as unfair, um, un, un, it, it almost unconscionable for that level of increase to be given to the parliamentarians whilst at the same time trying to convince the public to say, even though you're advocating for these things, even though we see the cost of living crisis, we can't give you any more now because we cannot manage it. And then suddenly you find money to give these huge increases to the political director. That's the point we're making. Yes. So we're saying that the government should reconsider and have dialogue with those unions. And I, I keep referencing isn't, the isn't president of the though? JTA. Yeah. The yeah. party was not consulted in the process. Therefore, he did not know. What he heard would have been that these are in line with what a permanent secretary would get. So that process, that methodology, he wouldn't take any issue with the methodology. You don't however, think this explanation however, insults our intelligence, Dr. No, Campbell. it doesn't. No, it doesn't. What I'm saying to you, I'm in parliament. I'm sitting down. The minister says these salaries are pegged to the salaries of the permanent secretaries. The, the person gets up to say, well, we don't take any issues with that. He goes on to say that we want you to address the anomalies. The party has completed that sentence or completed that point by going further to say, in light of these increases, we think that if you are going to give the political director this huge increase, then if you are only going to give a smaller increase to the majority of the persons in the public sector, then that to us is unconscionable and it is unjust well, PMP, and that those persons are in need. Remember, will we the are PMP talking about... Will be giving up the increase or foregoing the increase? Those discussions are ongoing. And, and I want to put this point squarely on the table. If they do... It still does not mean that a teacher who is having difficulty sending her children to school and providing for them will be able to do so. They still need that matter addressed as to okay. how they are compensated. You already said we're prepared to give up this. We're discussing giving up but that. Because you know that now going to happen. You know, say, come the 25th of the month or whenever it is, y'all get paid. The money going to be sent to your account. That's all. Yeah, man. But That's the money being sent to your account, we could contribute it to charities. We could contribute it to something else. And I'm saying that I am not here to try and enrich myself from the political process. I'm here to make a contribution. And I am willing and I'm very prepared, right, at any minute to the excess over what the other public sector workers have gotten to make that contribution to a charity or, or elsewhere. I am prepared and committed to doing that once that is the direction that the party is going in. I don't have any issues with that. The point I'm trying to make is that someone who is the product of education that a teacher would have believed in when I didn't believe in myself, I'm saying I do not believe that it is right that those persons should be struggling to survive. I do not think that it is right that when I'm operating as a medical doctor, I should be earning less than when I'm operating as a politician. I went to school for five years to study medicine. Politics, see, anybody can come and just go in it. Somebody's not going in their constituency is not an issue. They're not doing something One. in their constituency is not an issue. When One. I'm at the hospital, there I am being monitored. I have a supervisor. There are certain things that I have to do. If I don't do it, I can lose my job. That doesn't exist in the political space. One. Despite our time in the wilderness, we have not lost faith. We have not lost hope. We have not lost our conscience. We do not think it is right that a constituency development fund, CDF, is $20 million, but the salary of the, of the minister is more than the $20 million. The $20 million has to run the constituency, but the salary of the person who is in charge is more than what is given to run the constituency. Those are the things that we are having the difficulty with. Our teachers know that based on the increase that they've gotten, there is neg very impecunious, negligible increase on their net pay. I know of lawyers that are getting less than they were getting before. 
There are several persons like that. So we'd return to the negotiation table with these persons to correct those wrongs, to ensure that the increases across the board, that people have a livable wage. That's what the JTA president is calling for. So you're saying a PNP government, a future PNP government would return to the table? to renegotiate this whole public sector compensation reform process? We're going, we, we are willing to facilitate the discussions with the unions to ensure that there's equity across the board.